What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 90s First Podcasting Network. My name is Mike, and alongside my co-host, Joe, we take a look at some 90s content that we just can't stop watching. Join us on our flagship show, The 90s First Show. We look at some 90s content that Joe and I are watching, as well as some current stuff, and we end it with a 90s trivia contest. Or join us on Test Your Might a video game debate show where we battle it out on the current news. Joe hosts as our good buddy Cicero and I try to get the high ground and go 1000 IQ against each other. If you would like to connect with us, we are on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at the 90s first. And finally, if you would like to support us monetarily, we have a Patreon. Head on over to patreon.com slash the 90s first to show general support for as little as a dollar a month. So whether you're listening to the 90s first show or test your might, Joe and I would like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We hope that you have a blessed day. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the 90s First Show, where we take a look at some 90s content that we can't stop watching. My name is Mike, and alongside my co-host, Jelly. How you doing today, Jelly? I'm doing great, man. Super good. No, that's good. We got a special episode here today, Jelly, because we got two reunions that we are talking about. First reunion, of course, is we're welcoming back Max Mosier from the Infinity Bros. We had you back on the Power Rangers episode. You excited to talk Friends today? <laughs> oh, I'm ecstatic. I'm ecstatic. I'm hitting my microphone. I'm so ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> we were on a break. Yes. Yeah. We were on a break. Um, and so that's why we, we had to bring you back for this episode. Uh, we, we did not want you in any other episode since the Power Rangers. But <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, Do not good- blame you at all. His feelings, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you back, Max. Uh, let it let the listeners know what you've been up to, where you're from, what you do. Just uh, give us some of your plugs. Um, you got an empty house right now, so I know you're busy. So what's going on with with Max Mosier? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm Max. I'm from the Infinity Bros podcast. Uh, just with some of my best friends talking about literally everything under the sun. We're pumped. We have a new Loki episode coming out uh, either tomorrow night or Thursday morning. Uh, we're recording tomorrow, so. Working on that, uh, you could catch us out on on streaming with everything with Twitch. We're basically streaming every day because there's six of us. It's ridiculous. It's it's an, it's wild how much we do. But I'm busy because I'm currently moving, as you said. So if hopefully my audio isn't too echoey, I've got a ton of. You can't see it on screen, but I've got enough pillows to start a pillow fight army <laughs> if I needed to <laughs> next to me. So uh, yeah, just working through a move. Uh, excited to enter into summertime I, i'm a coach for track and field too so just got a couple more weeks left so it's boiling out here in minnesota where i'm from 100 degrees today and it's been 100 Ooh. degrees like three straight days it's ridiculous so dang yep, i'm so yeah man i'm but, right but, there I'm, with I'm, you I'm, in wisconsin I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be, so <laughs> yeah dude we're we're frying i'm just glad to be back i just think so highly of this podcast and this this uh this Thanks, little conglomerate man. you guys have and uh do, as far as we're concerned from the Infinity Bros podcast, you're an ex- just an extension of the Infinity Bros universe. So as far as we're concerned, we're just, you know, we're just we're just having a little team up movie here. That's how we look at it. <laughs> well, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, I know I know we were talking about getting uh, me and maybe Jelly on at some sometime uh, soon on the Infinity Bros. Oh, so for sure. We're looking forward to that. It's going uh, to yeah. happen. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. Looking now, forward to did it. you yeah. say low key or low key episode? Like it's low key, <laughs> low key. Yeah, that's a good question, and that's gonna happen a lot. Like I, I feel like our group is going to make that joke a few times, and I'm gonna cringe yeah. every time I hear it. When you say yes. it, Jelly, it's fun, it's charming, uh, it's very Chandler like. But when one of my friends <laughs> says it from my podcast, it's okay. We, maybe we need to consider editing this out, not having him back for the rest of this mini series. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, listeners, we're going to be talking all things Friends today, actually. Um, I know we've already did an episode on the first episode of Friends uh, way back in the day, Uh, but uh, we wanted to talk about the whole series as a whole um as we uh as we did watch the friends reunion uh so we'll be reviewing the friends reunion a little bit later on in the episode uh so make sure you stay along for that uh but first let's talk all things friends let's talk about the show in general um just how terrible it is how we don't love it yeah Uh, yeah. obviously (laughs) it's not one of our favorite sitcoms and we should never talk about it again gotcha max go for it all right 
Okay. Just for set, jelly set me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Max, I guess the question is what makes friends so great? Like why, why is it such a good show? I think friends really crushed and we're going to talk about the special, right? I think they talked about this. They just really hit it at the right time in regards to pop culture. They hit it at the right time in regards to casting. And I think from my perspective, while I am not the biggest friends fan per se, I I have respect for the show because it's listenership is just very loyal. So I think it's a mix of nostalgia. I think they would just at the right time in the right space as TV, the medium was just really kicking off. I think that really helped it. I mean, we were talking about this pre-show too. I think jelly said this, like every single character is relatable in some way to literally every single person. I think the mm-hmm. writers really did a great job of that. And um, so from my perspective, that's how I would look at the show. Again, I, I am not the biggest Friends fan, but I was taken back watching the special at how much more emotion at much more emotion I felt than I expected. And um, yeah. it's just a big part of the 90s, which is like hilarious because it's like perfect for your guys' podcast, right? Like when that special <laughs> oh, yeah. came out, I bet you two were just foaming at the mouth. You're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my, this is going to get so many clicks. And it should get so many clicks because it's it's a very, very crazy thing that that even happened. So yes. yeah, I think that's where I would sit on it. But I, I they also crushed it on like guest stars. Like when you look back on it, some of their guest stars were fantastic. I know so Brad too. Pitt and Jennifer Aniston were having their... Well, they were having their Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston were having their thing back then, right? So like, yeah, just kind of just like right time. It felt like all the time with all their their choices. And man, if if that show still has some very great comedic moments that still hold up in some way, so that's a long answer. But that that that'd be what I would say in terms of that. But I don't know what you guys thought from from that episode as well. I wonder what you guys thought. I enjoyed Jelly. it. Uh, I mean, I obviously set it up uh, parody wise to to make it sound like I didn't, but it was so good. Uh, I have loved the friends for a very long time. I first watched it not when it aired, but as an adult, which I think was better for me. I watched episodes when I was younger, but it didn't hit. I mean, I was too young to enjoy them and to understand them fully. But as I watched it when I was 21, 20 or 21, uh, I was working in Alaska. Uh, my wife was at home pregnant and I was by myself, uh, in the middle of Alaska, uh, well uh, on the ocean, but we were working in a lodge and what they had was they had the friends complete series on DVD and I got oh, to watch it. Go. Uh, so that's what we watched every night after work and we were working like 16, 18 hour days. Uh, we'd throw on friends and just kind of feel at home, you know, feel like we were a part of something, feel, mm. uh, good. You know, especially when in Alaska, work isn't always great uh, and long hours like that aren't always great. Uh, if you can if you can put something on that makes you feel good again and feel at home and uh, characters that are super relatable and, uh, you know, the skits and the things that they did each episode were real life things uh, fudged a little bit. Because, come on, <laughs> no one's going to no people like that are going to be able to afford an apartment that they've got let alone two of them next to each other. Uh, right. So it fudged a little bit, but, you know, so relatable, like you said. Uh, their lives, their stories, and all the things that they go through. It's relationships uh, with other people and then relationships with each other, and the entire thing is them working on it. So it was it was so good to be introduced to that as an adult where I could appreciate it more. Uh, and I thought the, the reunion, I mean, like you said, nailed it. It was more emotional than I thought it would be. Uh, and you know i have some attachment to the show i really did enjoy it and uh and the reunion uh, it hit harder than i expected yeah emotionally the reunion yeah it was um just i echo that sentiment for both of you guys uh with the reunion you know i definitely definitely felt a little bit more emotions than i thought i was going to um but you know friends to me uh i same boat as you uh jelly i watched it when i was an adult in college long distance um with my wife and she would be doing her like annual like watch through of friends. Um, (laughs) but she would actually save, uh, she would actually save watching, uh, the show with, with me when I would come up over on the weekends and, you know, she would have the DVDs and stuff like that. And so 
so yeah, just a really fond memory of long distance. You know, I, you know, long distance sucks and to have something that you and your long distance, you know, uh, fiance at the time would, would be doing like, and looking forward to, Hey, we're going to watch the friends. Mike's never watched it. I always looked forward to watching several episodes. Um, friends to me, it's so hilarious. Um, <laughs> The, the one thing, yes. the one thing like you, you talk about sitcoms with laugh tracks and like, there's so many, so many like laugh tracks sitcoms that you just don't laugh with, but like friends is different to me. Like I, I laugh with friends, um, and just the humor in general, it's just spot on. I, I love the characters, uh, Joey and Chandler, two of my favorite characters in Absolutely. sitcom history. I mean, so amazing. Uh, and yeah, just, just some really good stuff. Um, Friends, Friends is great. If you've never watched it, um, the, the way I watched it, I, uh, my wife was like, you need to start in season two. Uh, so actually, I started season two, episode one. What? And then I I rolled, uh, snaked back over to uh, season one and, and watched that. It was pretty interesting. But yeah, yeah season two, okay. you know, yeah, but watching watching it through, season two definitely picks up way better than, than season one, in my opinion. So... Um, all right, uh, Jelly, what's your favorite episode of Friends? Oh, gosh, so hard. Um, I almost always harken back to the Thanksgiving Day episodes, and I'm cheating because they have a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> and I know I'm, do- I'm doing that on purpose, obviously, but those episodes are so good. Um, Thanksgiving for me and my family was always a big gathering, was always uh, friends and fr- you know, friends and family. So the family Thanksgiving <laughs> and it felt in many ways kind of like their Thanksgivings do hectic, chaotic, fun, funny. Uh, something always is going wrong, uh, but it ends up being a good time anyways. And that's how all of their episodes go. Uh, the uh, the turkey pants, though, I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> If you yeah. don't know that reference, I'm sorry. Classic. <laughs> I, I like the one where Monica puts uh, the turkey on her head. Um, that one's funny, too. Yes. <laughs> so. It's brilliant. Max, it's brilliant. what's your favorite episode of all time? I love when they're throwing the football back and forth. I just think that's hilarious. And how it just like slowly adds other people into oh, the conversation. Oh, don't drop the ball? And again, this goes back. <laughs> yeah, don't drop the ball. I just think is it was it a football yeah. or just like a regular whatever it was. It was just a. It just was just a like ball. a Nerf ball. And I just think yeah. that's like yeah. <laughs> classic. That's just classic dorm room, hanging out with your buddies kind of goofiness, and it just it captures it so well. And they're, everybody's freaking out. You're about they're about to drop it. I think Chandler's the one that almost drops it. <laughs> Such a good episode. So funny. And then all this craziness is happening around around them. Right. So. I just love that one. But uh, these are just great moments. Uh, for me, I don't even look at Friends as like episodes. I look at it as like moments. So it's difficult for me to like pick a favorite episode, I think, more so than to look at like yeah, highlights okay. moments that I think. You about. can pick like arcs in the episode All right. for the characters. Hold your, th- yeah, hold your thought then, Max. Yeah. I got – hold your thought then. I got an outline here. Uh, all right. Uh, before we move on, my favorite episode is the one with the apartment where they uh, have the quiz show uh, to oh, see who yes. wins oh, yeah. Monica and Rachel's apartment. <laughs> um, it's, it's bar none the, the best episode in my opinion. And uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like even the cast believes that that's one of the best or at least the writers because they brought it back in the reunion uh, in a it special way. Good. So, yeah, well <laughs> – they don't know what Chandler does. None yeah. of us know what Chandler does, oh, but no. they didn't know what Chandler does. <laughs> All right. We'll, uh, we'll get back to that. Um, Max, favorite character? Oh, wow. That is a great question. I- I'm going to stick in the long run, though, with Chandler. That's the safest bet, I think, to me out of the six to take. Just incredibly witty. Always has a sarcastic comment. In my opinion, is in the stronger of the two couples. I believe his and uh, Monica's relationship was actually at times more interesting than Ross and Rachel's. So that plays a little oh, bit yeah. into my I'm decision with you on too. That, for sure. I would never pick Monica as my favorite though. Uh, but, but Chandler, I think is definitely one of the candidates <laughs> for that. So that's probably why I, I'd pick Chandler just from like the humor perspective, the fact that he's in the stronger couple. And I mean, Matthew Perry just is hilarious. Uh, I, I think he's hilarious. So I think good. he had the best comedic timing. Maybe LeBlanc would be second as Joey, but I think I think Perry was would absolutely crush it. I, I bet he was adding so much more to that script than we know. Oh, 
for sure. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Not my favorite Pair, character, yeah. but <laughs> who's I, yours? I, who's I agree yours? <laughs> that he uh, he added comedic timing better than I think anyone else could have. Uh, I'm a Joey. I feel like I am a Joey. Uh, my name happens to be Joe, which helps, but <laughs> but I just feel like uh, you know I can relate to the uh, the kind of a goofball, kind of a meathead. Uh, I am not Joey attractive, but hey, we can't all be Matt LeBlanc. Um, I'll take what I can get. But I love his character in the show. I love that he is the ultimate friend to everyone. Uh, I think he more than anyone else uh goes the distance when it comes to being uh there for everyone uh whether it's chandler his roommate and best friend whether it's ross when he likes the same girl as him whether it's uh i almost said jennifer whether it's rachel uh <laughs> when she, she she just needs somebody or monica like or phoebe always he is always there he's always the ultimate friend he is like through everything no matter what joey's got your back and he will defend you until his last breath and i love that about him uh he's not the funniest although he is hilarious he is uh you know he's he doesn't have one of those relationships in the show so we don't have that aspect at all for him but for some reason he does he he stood out more than anyone to me so joey is my guy Mr. Tribune. Uh, yeah, Chan- Chandler's my guy too. Uh, so, <laughs> um, love Chandler, man. Uh, I think I think Max, you hit on it where he is. Uh, he's such a grounded husband in in such a way that like he is, you know, he has that he has that uh, profound turn of events that relationship with with Monica that kind of solidified me as his favorite character. You know, uh, solidified him as my favorite character just because. You have several seasons of him just being kind of a goof off, you know, just kind of just kind of like joking around, not being not taking things really seriously. And then he kind of switches to taking things a little bit more seriously, plus having those comedic elements as well. He never loses his character. Um, And then he just also makes a very, very good husband and grounds Monica. He definitely grounds Monica. (laughs) She needs that um, for sure. Uh, So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, if there was a close second, it would probably be Ross for me um, just because I do believe Ross is kind of his like character development is like uh, a little bit underrated in the Friends cast. Uh, just seeing his seeing his moments and seeing his character grow uh, is pretty, pretty good, too. So, uh, Max, you alluded to it. So we'll go to you first because uh, I had it in my outline. And so I had to stop you. What's your favorite moment in Friends? Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe string no, some if, moments if together or something. <laughs> No, if anybody understands what it's like to put show notes together and then have their their people or guests come on and try to ruin them, with me, <laughs> forgive me, Mike. Um, no, I, I again, I love no, the, I love you're that fine. football moment, man. I do. I love that football moment. I really, really love the quiz show. I was going to say that too. That's a big highlight. They talk. I mean, when the reveal of Monica and Chandler being a thing happens, that's wild. Oh, a smelly yeah. cat yes. is wild. <laughs> Gunther. I mean, how many moments with Gunther can I have where I'm just not? I, every time Gunther's on the screen and he's hitting on Rachel, it just b- warms my soul. I just think he's so funny. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of moments I would, I would take. I, I just I love I love the ones we talked about. I, I mean, all the all the big highlights. I think that, I really think this series finale really hits it on the head too, and how they they really all move Mm -hmm. on and have blissful domestic lives. Right. I, I think they really crush that. And so as I've been watching more shows this last year and a half with COVID, it's remarkable when you see a show land correctly. And I think friends does that. So I would put the finale as, as one of the moments as well. And I think that's a highlight that this show can take to the bank. I agree, hundred percent. The finale is maybe one of the best television finales of all time. Uh, very, very, very few shows are able to wrap up everything as neatly and nicely as they did, and they did it without giving away too much, without solidifying anything. They just said, and now they're moving into their lives as couples yeah. and families instead of friends, and and it was so perfect. Uh, obviously, that's a great moment. 
Um, so with you on that one, fantastic. I love the down moments in the show though, because they led to some of the best reveals and some of the best, uh, like coming back together to be friends moments. So when Monica was with, uh, Richard or, uh, John Favreau's character, whose name I'm blanking on, um, and Chandler had to figure out a way to be okay with it. Uh, loved that Chandler. He was so good when he was like just jealous <laughs> and like wanting Monica, but not understanding that that's what he wanted. Uh, I love the, uh, the Ross can't be with Rachel moments. Um, was it a break? Uh, official it was a break uh, but I love those moments it and was definitely a break it was definitely a break <laughs> I, I love what it it led to uh the the you know the letters the notes the trip to the beach all of the the episodes that that ensued from those the low moments uh I feel like they were able the the payoff was so great and they were they were able to capitalize on those those low moments so I love the low moments because they led into some of the best, uh, the best moments in the show. All right. Um, so I got two, uh, just two memorable moments to me. Um, when Joey comes in, uh, to the one where they can't get ready, uh, and he's wearing all of Chandler's clothes (laughs) and he says the line exactly in the same cadence that Chandler would have said. And, you know, could I be wearing any more clothes? (laughs) And it's just, and he does a lunge and he's working out in his clothes. And then, and then the moment doesn't end because Chandler, he like freaks out. He's going, (laughs) and he just like freaks out at Joey and it's, Oh man, that's that's one of the best. And then, man, I cannot, we cannot, we cannot mention a Friends episode without the pivot moment. Just does pivot, them taking pivot, <laughs> yeah. pivot, <laughs> just them taking up the couch. Shut oh, up, shut my up, goodness. shut up. Oh, it's just the best. Um, you just can't, you cannot <laughs> stop laughing when you have that moment. Um, it's just, it's it's one of the best scenes in all of sitcom history. It is <laughs> so, truly right. iconic now. Yes. Oh man. Um, so speaking of pivot, let's pivot to a brand new segment that I created just Ooh. for Max. Um, Ooh, just for okay. Max. Uh-oh. So, and. Listeners, if you've uh, if you listen to the Infinity Bros podcast or maybe seen Max's Twitter feed, sometimes he can go on some rants. And so our new segment is called Max Rants. Oh. And oh, Max, no. here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a block of time here and I'm going to let you rant. Um, uh, and it's I'm, I'm ready to listen. Um, I'm nervous but, now. But I have a specific topic. I have a specific topic for you. And, and the reason why I, I chose uh, this new segment is... I, I just love your passion about this subject because I've seen it. I've seen it on Twitter. Okay. I'm going to hit you, Max, I'm oh going to hit you with a statement and you're just going to rant about that statement. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> I, I get, I'm, we bamboozle so many question. people on our podcast <laughs> in, in a segment like this. So I feel bamboozled, but I'm so excited at the same time. All right. No, but but tell let me tell you, I'm I'm I am so ecstatic to hear this rant. Um okay. Okay. All and right. uh good. also I named it Max Rants instead of ranting Max because now we can maybe now we can maybe use this segment in the future as well. Like, you cool, know, like rants it. to the max okay. type of deal. All right. All right. Yep. Anyway, okay. Max, the okay. statement is recently, uh due to COVID, you watched a certain particular show. So here's the statement. Oh, gosh, yeah. Here's We're the already, statement. Yeah. Okay. Why do people believe How I Met Your Mother is better than Friends? Uh, okay, well, there's a couple reasons. One, so radon's a big problem in people's houses, I've learned as I'm selling my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that uh, we, I know that mental health has really increased over this time frame the last two years. Uh, alcoholism is really big in, in the United States. Uh, I just think you know people played a lot of football over the last couple of decades, so you know you could have a couple head hits. Car accidents are really big. Some CTE. Um, I, I, gotcha. I think uh, people get misinformation. I think it, really, Mike. Let's be frank here. There's there's not a good reasonable person on the planet that really really thinks this and has has had a critical thought ever in their life. Friends is so much more superior. And again, I'm not a big Friends fan. However, to hear anybody give How I Met Your Mother any credence, 
we could go beat for beat, right? So How I Met Your Mother has stolen things from friends. It's clear and obvious they've stolen <laughs> things. Things we've referenced today, they've stolen. Um, the ending is absolutely abysmal. Um, they basically do the same setup with, you know, it's it's the same exact setup it's that they meet in a in an apartment or at a bar. So an apartment or a coffee shop. Um, you could make an argument that some of the characters are basic cut out outlines of the previous characters, except Ted is a complete shell of Ross, I think is how I would put it. It's like if Ross didn't have any character and never stood up for himself ever. And yeah, I think how I met your mother's abysmal. I really do. Ouch. I think it's horrible. And uh yeah, I'm glad you say that, Mike. I'm I it's really funny you say this, Mike, because I was going to compare it to how I met your mother, like eventually. I was going to make the comparison. So it's like you kind of saved your audience from me <laughs> ranting without the segment or the bit. You had the foresight here, which is very remarkable on your end too, to know this was coming. I just I I talk about endings. Like I cannot believe how bad that ending to how I met your mother was. <laughs> <laughs> and in retrospect, comparing it to Friends, oh, it's, it's so bad. It's not even close. And well, and I just think the depth, the depth just isn't there. And the direction of where Friends wanted to go is way better. So that's a long-winded answer. Um, I mean, there are there are resources out there for you if you are struggling mentally. Uh, you should take them because a sign of mental health issues could be that you think How I Met Your Mother is better than Friends. <laughs> that's that's it's that bad. It's that bad. That was a fantastic rant. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, I knew you would br- I go. knew There's you would Max bring rant. I knew you would bring the hype for the Max Rants, man. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had to throw that at you because you know, we even had a little bit of a conversation on Twitter about how I met your mother and like how I met your mother, I, I agree with you. Like the first first seven seasons I love. I love how I met your mother for seven seasons. Then season eight, I'm just like, Ted, can you just find your mom already? Um, and then, and then season nine, oh my goodness, the abysmal ending. I think you're right. If you do not think, uh, if you do not think that friends is better than how I met your mother, take a note from Max and his rant. All right. That's been Max <laughs> rants. Do you guys, do you guys like that uh, segment? It's a great segment. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, um, let's get into our 90s now segment where we review something from the 90s that has been rebooted or revitalized. And so, of course, today, our friend special, we're going to be talking about Friends the Reunion. Um, really quickly, before I uh, before we go into it, I want to hit you guys with some of the stats that um, James Corden, I believe is his name, the, uh, the late night ho- show host, Hit the yes. hit, hit the friends cast with at the beginning. Fifty two million people watched the finale of Friends. That's an insane and, number. Yeah, and in my uh, review, uh, in my review of the reunion that I wrote uh, over on Patreon.com slash the nice first, check that out. Um, I that is fifty two or that is that is about forty million more than the Game of Thrones finale. And as the aforementioned comparison to How I Met Your Mother, it is about 50 (laughs) more than the finale of How I Met Your Mother. Um, Or, sorry, 30 and 40. 30 uh, more than Game of Thrones, 40 more about than uh, (laughs) than How I Met Your Mother. A hundred billion times Friends has been watched. Either streamed, um, they they have that data now. A hundred billion times it has been streamed, watched by the uh, billions of people around the world. That's such an six, insane number, <laughs> right? It's absolutely insane. Uh, six seasons, uh, they were the they were rewarded the best comedy, and twenty five million weekly views. Those numbers are crazy, right, Max? They're they're astronomical. And I think the streaming numbers, I don't even know if we have a full accurate measure of the streaming numbers. No. I mean, well, right? like, not I, watch I, just, I, don't, I don't know if. They, they, yeah, said, they the, said in the, the reunion I mean, like, that it was a hundred billion times watched through. So, like, I mean, we have we have some I type still of feel like that's low, to be frank. <laughs> yeah. Imagine all the people rewatching that just feels on low because we have two. I have. So That's my wife exactly. and I both have a copy of Friends, the complete series, on DVD. So that's yeah. I was I was just gonna say that too, Jelly. I I I don't know how you can track this. 
the, it just. I, I think it, I think maybe it, it was a streaming exclusive shows. stat potentially. Could be wrong on that, but just wanted to do that stuff. Yeah, but even what about syndication? Did that include syndication for like, you know, your crappy local networks? Does that include that? <laughs> I, I don't even know. Like yeah. maybe, who knows? So that, that could be. That could be. I, I mean, seriously, it lower. is so insane. Yeah, I mean, regardless, yeah. even if it, even if one hundred billion is the base of what that's that number the low is, side. if that's the low end, then holy cow, um, pretty crazy. Uh, so. Max, we'll we'll go your way again first. Uh, like, I guess, what stood out from the Friends reunion uh, for you? Like, what what were some of the high moments? Uh, what insights did you gather from it that you really enjoyed? What you got, man? I loved that David Schwimmer and Jennifer Aniston might have had something. <laughs> I don't know if it was played up. I don't know if they were told ahead of time to kind of talk about it. But I loved it. It makes that whole mythology way deeper, way more fun. And it totally sucks people back into this series. It was an incredible marketing idea. If it's if it's true, <laughs> it's bananas. It really totally adds depth to those oh, characters. Oh, so much better. That's just like, that's like the big high. That's like, I think, going to be the clickbait answer. What I personally enjoyed was I felt, I really liked how they did the each cast member goes back one by one. It does feel like they did do a good job of keeping them away from each other. And I th- and even just doing the table reads of specific scenes and having them reminisce about certain things. And you're kind of watching these actors come back just not the same as what they were. They're not bad by any stretch. I mean, Matthew Perry, you can make some arguments that that was a really rough go for him, or at least since Friends ended to the point he filmed this. He had had some battle scars. Yeah. But I was really just taken aback at, you know, this show really does show how humanity rolls in the sense of, you know, age catches up to everybody. And I really enjoyed it. I think they really did a killer job with the nostalgia piece. Again, I was way more emotional about this than I thought I was going to be because I would not hold friends as high as the highest of like my sitcoms for me personally. But I respect it for what it is and respect it. And I understand a lot of people love this series so i i was i was impressed overall with all of it i could not get more of them talking about it though i i think they need to strongly consider filming if they haven't more of those behind the scenes things that's incredible insight and it's so much fun with shows like that to hear that for sure like it, it, kind of exactly what you were saying i was just i was wanting more like i just wanted them to just sit around that that dinky old couch again and just talk more about it and like you know i i definitely i definitely loved some of the insight from like the directors and like stuff like that and and obviously how they casted each of the characters and stuff like that and all the insight behind the scenes but at the end of the day that's probably the one fault that i give it is that like i just wish it was more of the cast you you know just like talking through uh just just their lives during the friends uh 10 seasons that it went um jelly what do you got what what stood out to you what'd you like about the reunion uh max hit it on the head i think the walking them in and letting them ex- re-experience the set the set pieces again uh was huge and i love that it started with that um so for those who haven't watched it yet spoiler but they they release them back into the sets and they've remade the sets to season one um and then they let the they let them in kind of one by one uh, the first one in, and then the first one stayed in the set, and then the next person came in, explored the set, found their castmate, and they did that until uh, everyone was there. And that was so, so cool and so like heavy hitting to see their like real visceral reaction to being back on set for the first time uh, in what twenty years. Um, just was was huge to me Mm -hmm. um and then yes i would love if they would uh they could cut james corden out completely and just sit them around the card table uh where they were reading their scripts and then reminiscing on the set about all the stuff and i would have watched that for four hours over his interview because his interview was okay but like i just didn't care about him or all their guest stars and stuff like that like as a uh, as a fan of this show what i wanted was i wanted 
uh, the the six main characters back, and I wanted their take on everything. Since then, about the show and how it was, I think the directors, uh, what was it, Kevin Bright, David Crane, and uh, Marta Kaufman, uh, mm-hmm. having their insight was huge, or the show producers was yeah, was really huge. Cool. Uh, so let them in on it. But if they have more behind the scenes that they could release later, like I'm going to watch that. I, I <laughs> loved it. I didn't care about all of the production. I usually don't, I'm not someone who cares about that kind of stuff. So the runway and Sputnik and James Corden and his fancy red suit, like meaningless to me, but having all six actors back and the producers and getting a sit down with them, uh, that would be huge. I did enjoy having some of the prior guests of the show back on, though. Yes, uh, that was that cool. was huge for me. So Reese Witherspoon and Tom Selleck and uh, the downstairs neighbor who has yeah. a name but doesn't have a name. Uh, all of those things were awesome. Upstairs. <laughs> was he upstairs? I thought they were upstairs. And he was, was downstairs. He? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Could be wrong. Probably am. Um <laughs> I, uh, I, I yeah. uh, just to add to that too. To add to that too, Jelly. Like, I thought the smelly cat with Lady Gaga thing was absolutely abysmal and the most cringe thing I've I watched the whole time. Hated it. I despised so it. And <laughs> there was a hundred better ways for them to say Phoebe. Thanks for playing a weird character on this show. They did that. That was on the bottom of the list. I ugh, that was so bad. <laughs> okay tell us how you really feel max <laughs> hot take i agree with it was you so bad it was just it was bad it was bad it was like it just and it was in the choir coming out it was like for smelly cat come on, come on. yeah it came there, off there was super only yuck. one max rants there was only one max rant segment in the episode i know that's why i kept it to short and i said hey i just wanted to piggyback off jelly that was his touchdown call uh i was just the sideline reporter yeah. I got you. Um, but no, I, I, I mean, I agree. Uh, you know, they brought out the choir for Smelly Cat because they did that. Uh, they did that re-release um, in one of the episodes. I, they had the choir behind that. But um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's a lot of fluff. Like what we wanted to see, right, was them sitting around the table and just just and just chatting. One, um, I think one of the coolest things about that about the reunion was the table readings. Like they were reading their lines as if it were the episode that they were on, like beat for beat. Mm. They were reading them exactly how they how they did uh, when they recorded, and just the fact that they could just roll right back into that those characters and you know, it would, it would be perfect still is, is just amazing. Uh, they're all brilliant actors. Uh, I mean, you know, aside from Matthew Perry, he might not be able to, I was reading him on Matthew Perry, like three years ago, he did have a stroke. So that's kind of why he looked, uh, looked a little struggling, uh, during the reunion. But, you know, for the, for the most part, he was, everybody was looking great. Um, you know, the, the, the cast was, you know, all this insight into the show. Like, what did you what did you guys think of? I thought one of the coolest things was that they were talking about the audience not really changing their minds. Um, but when the audience saw Monica and Chandler together in the, in the bed, they completely changed the script and the rest of the series. Like, because the audience went wild for like 15 minutes. Like, yeah, Jelly, they changed, that was they, they changed the direction <laughs> Jelly, think? of the show. They they yeah. said in the reunion, so for those who haven't watched yet, watch it, but spoiler, they changed the story arc for Chandler and Monica based on audience reaction to seeing them together in bed in London. In London. Or, yeah, because yep. they were still on London in time. In London! <laughs> uh, and and that, cha- that changed the trajectory of the show entirely. Mm-hmm. Uh and obviously they weren't that far ahead. Um, so they didn't have to like change everything about it, but at moving forward, it changed everything that they did because now they had to go forward with this idea of how do we want to make these characters? How do we want to mold this relationship? How do we want to move through this relationship? Uh, where friends fall in love with each other in a group of friends. Uh, so that was huge. The other thing was, uh, audience participation was really big because if a show didn't land they rewrote it like yeah right if one then, of the jokes while recording yeah yep. while live audience recording if the joke didn't land like they wanted it they would rewrite the joke and then have them go out and deliver a new joke on the fly which is 
to me, that sounds so crazy to be able to rewrite something like that while you're recording in front of a live audience. Like that is huge. And they would do that if necessary. Uh, I don't know if it was all that necessary because, uh, I mean, Chandler's deliveries were perfectly uh, perfect. Matthew Perry's deliveries for Chandler were amazing. Um, Joey and or Matt LeBlanc and Matthew Perry were great <laughs> together. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to try to do all the names. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, yes, all the characters work so well together. And they were able to feed off and work off each other so well that I don't think it was super necessary. But to hear that they would do that just based on audience appeal was like crazy to me uh i obviously have no background in show or tv production so i don't understand really what that entails but in my head that that seems like this this almost insurmountable task to rewrite on the fly for the script that you're recording that the actors already have memorized and are working on and and things like like to be able to do that is so big and for the audience to have such a big part of that uh is really cool to me. I mean, that's us affecting the show and making the show better live while being recorded. Yeah. Max, any insight on that? I'd echo everything Jelly said again, per usual. Uh, I, I mean, I would say <laughs> where I would add to that is this is again a blueprint for why successful things are successful. When you yes. listen to your consumer, when you listen to your audience, good things happen. They will honor you. They will stick with you long term. And I think that's the prime example of that. I also, to watch the the writers sit like as a t- team of 12 of them and write a joke and then the main guy laughs and they're like, that's the one we're going to put in. And then it ends up being a great line that is in a Thanksgiving episode. I remember from the special, I forget what the line was, but it was from a Thanksgiving episode. That's an amazing creative process and an incredibly group of talented people. And honestly, Mike, I, I would have liked to see personally myself a little more from the writers. I would have liked to know how that process was. I would have liked to know what their late nights were like to write some of these episodes because how do you come up with the creative process to get to some of these points is pretty remarkable. And so I I, I want both. I want an episode of just the cast talking too. <laughs> and I want like a writer's insight too. Like I, I agree with both of you. I want insight more into both. It's, I thought it was really well done. I agree, Jelly. Awesome. Behind the scenes would be awesome. Writer from yes. the writing team. I would not be against <laughs> that at all. <laughs> They're unbelievable. They oh, are so yeah. talented. I mean, yeah, to to keep a show going ten seasons and to be every bit engaging every single episode. Yeah, just brilliant writers. Um, what I thought it was funny that uh, Ross and the cast, uh, that uh, David Schwimmer and the cast hated Marcel. They hated the monkey. Oh yeah, that was that was good. <laughs> uh, he for sure did. Uh, obviously, they talked about it in the special, but like that was his least favorite. He said that was his least favorite thing about the entire series was working with a monkey because it sucked. <laughs> it's like, oh man, but he was so great on the show and everyone, yeah. everyone, like you could hear the reaction when he said that, like James Corden was like, wait, what? And like <laughs> everyone else, their live audience was like shocked that he would say that the monkey sucked to work with. But like he explained it really well and it makes total sense. A monkey would be terrible to work with. <laughs> like that sounds yeah. awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Max, going a little bit back to a, kind of what Jelly was saying, you know, they they flipped the script to, you know, fit more Monica and Chandler in the latter half of the season instead of what they thought was going to be a Ross and Rachel show. Now, you said you said that you liked the Monica and Chandler uh, couple better. Do you think do you think that was a risk? Like, was that was that do you think that they should have stuck with Ross and Rachel or what are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, if that was their original choice, I could see where that would feel like a risk. But after that reaction from the audience, how are you feeling like you're taking a huge risk? I think they really watched that and went, this is so critical. We have to do this and we can evolve it how we see fit. But let the audience dictate that this is a relationship we want to see more of. I mean, you talked about too earlier, Jelly, like how. You did the will they won't they thing with them too, but you actually landed the plane and let them be together and got them married and watched that beginning part of that stage of their relationship flourish. I think that was, I wouldn't call it a risk per se 
from my perspective, I would call it a risk from a writer's perspective whose whole career hinges on this story arc, and they had to really look at that. But I'm proud of them, and I again, I tip my hat to them. That took incredible humility to go back on everything you were thinking up to that point and go, all right, we're going to go with this and have the ability to pivot like that. Pivot uh, in a way that works well for the story. I thought that was really brilliant. That's good. Uh, yeah, it's such good stuff uh, that they're able to just take one cue from the audience and it changes the whole direction of your show. It's just absolutely, absolutely bonkers. Um, we we got to mention it. They had the quiz, right? Uh, they brought back, but they did it. They did it in Friends trivia, right? So it was the mm-hmm. boys versus the girls and. You know, going ten seasons on a show, and and they didn't know much of their own trivia. <laughs> I mean, it's been twenty years, and they've been doing a lot of other stuff. I can't fault them too hard, yeah. but uh, but Joey knew his identical hand twin. I thought that was fascinating. I thought that was, that was crazy. so good. Yes, <laughs> I, although crazy. I also picked it out. So just saying, it um, wasn't that difficult. But uh, no, it was it was, it was so fun. Come on, <laughs> I mean, so inside baseball, my wife and I also watched it together, just like your wife and you did, Mike. I don't know if you and your wife watched it, Max. Um, nope. All right, um, but we were sitting on the couch in the living room, and I was all, "Oh, it's number two. Immediately, immediately, I was, like, oh, was number two, and sure <laughs> enough, revealed to be number two. Uh, but like it wasn't that hard but i love him as an actor uh, and i'm not gonna remember his name but he was <laughs> fantastic uh and i love that they did a lot of the bits from the show they brought back a lot of the bits from the show and redid them in the reunion yeah. for the quiz game show wow yeah. that's hard there you go <laughs> tongue twister <laughs> well max did you uh did you get all the questions right in the quiz show Oh, no way. Because, again, I, I'm not like – again, I'm not a hardcore Friends enthusiast. I But the quiz show episode, I loved the vibes. And, again, kind of what you guys are saying, like I loved how they would watch and then you could see them remember Im- immediately like it was yesterday because they were – to mix all the, you know, the senses that they were experiencing while they were doing this. I, it had to be a trip for those guys just oh, down yeah. memory lane. They were awakening memories no, yeah. they didn't even think of. Absolutely, yeah. To be to mm. to just be thrown back like that. I mean, it was. A, I'm sure it was absolutely like stepping into a time machine, uh, and you know, being transferred right back there, transported right back to that moment when they were when they were filming the first time, and uh, and it was so fun to see because you're right, they did. They they fell right back into it, and immediately, I mean acting the same as their character mm-hmm. counterparts did while sitting on the couch and all hanging out like it was so good um <laughs> but yeah they fell right back into it it was amazing yeah absolutely brilliant well let's uh let's wrap up here by just talking lastly on the finale uh you know the writers they you know they said in the reunion that they didn't want they didn't want to write it as if they were going to get a sequel movie or whatever, another season or whatever. They wanted to put a bow on all of their stories and then have the audience uh, figure out like what what maybe they're doing in 10 years or whatever um, and just th- imagine that. Uh, so, Max, like... You you've already alluded to just the finale of this being such such a wonderful uh, end to the show. Um, was it was it cool to see that they were kind of going for that and that they were they weren't trying to write themselves into, you know, basically a sequel? Yeah, and even when you hear them asked by James Corden in the special, would you be willing to come back for a movie or another season? You can sense the apprehension from the writers. They're pretty firm about they want to end right here. And on top of it, they got to get Paul Rudd to come back too, which is going to be difficult (laughs) nowadays to do. They might not be able to afford him. (laughs) I was going to say, I I don't know. HBO after this might want to do it. We'll see. They're going to be very, it's going to be very tempting for HBO to try to do something after this, because I think a lot of people will be, going back and rewatching friends after this. I think we're going to see a ton of people do that. I personally would not recommend they do it. I think they went out on top and that's the way you want to go. And there are tons of shows that I love that 
I like some finales. Obviously, I hate How I Met Your Mother. It actually ruins the whole season, the whole series, excuse me, for me. But I think Friends just ends it so gracefully and talk and and really articulates that no, this stage of friendship is over. Now we're transitioning into our relationship with our partner stage. And I think that really works well for this show and, and the premise of what the writers were going for. I, I, I cannot praise these writers enough. I think they are some of the best in the business. And these guys and gals are just chef's kiss. And, and I don't think they should have to defend themselves about not writing anymore. I'm going to max this one and I'm going to second everything that you said. It was perfect. Perfectly well put. I loved it. Uh, yes. Jelly and I are in the same wavelength. If uh, <laughs> if I was to add anything, right? I'm supposed to do one of those. If I was to add anything, uh, <laughs> no, I agree. I, in my opinion, they ended it the perfect way. They let us continue the story. They, they didn't. They yeah. didn't wrap it up nice and neat and say this is how it ended. They they gave us the tools to say, okay, now you do it. You as the fan choose what you want the rest of their life to be like, and that's how it is. So however we wanted it to be, whatever we wanted it to look like, they gave us the power and said, it's yours. Take it. Like, these are your friends. This is your family. Like, we have made them a part of your lives for a decade, and now creative control is yours. We're ending right here, and they ended the show, and I I really don't think that they should do anything more with it. I don't think they should bring a spinoff. I don't think they should bring it back. I don't think they should touch this show i think if people want more they need to rewatch it and decide what ending they want for their characters and be happy with that uh i am i am so picky when it comes to shows ending that most of the time uh people who know me well know that i do not finish shows i will not watch finales of shows because i am afraid they will ruin it uh i have messed up too many times and watched the finales so now most of the time i will stop at the last episode and rather than spoil a good thing i will stop watching uh (laughs) friends is one of the very few shows uh that i felt so happy uh that i watched through um as opposed to how i met your mother or more recently and what we've compared it to in this episode is game of thrones game of thrones had one of the worst endings in my Mm. opinion even on rewatch uh that it felt so rushed that it became garbled and garbage and it was not good uh to me maybe there's people that liked it but it's so different to see a show end like friends did and be happy with that and i think so unique to friends to see the writers give reins to their creation to the audience and say all right you get to be in charge like whatever you want is is what happens and we're just stopping it here yeah i i agree with you guys i think rebooting i think making something else for something that is seemingly perfect obviously uh there's no perfect in tv but Friends, friends got it for the most part right, and uh, I think if you touch it again, I think you'd be making a great mistake. Um, another ninety show, the uh, a Boy Meets World. They they made Girl Meets World, and it's not as good. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, even I though, think what you meant to say was it it's not good, but you're uh, close. <laughs> no, I like some of the nostalgia things that come with that. You know, just the callbacks, but. Regardless, it's definitely uh, not the best. Um, anyway, guys, uh, this has been our episode on Friends. Max, Wait, thanks for joining us again. We're missing one what? thing, Mike. What are we missing? The trivia, my friend, the trivia. Oh, I wasn't going to do trivia because it's you got you to gotta go. <laughs> we got to go. We've got three minutes left here, folks, and then I got to get to work, and Max has got some other right. stuff he's got to do too, but <laughs> we've got to have trivia. All now. right. Well, every we do we do trivia. Uh, we've Max the last couple episodes. I don't know if you've listened, but they have been absolute layups. Um, so hopefully this one because is our knowledge a little is bit so harder. Vast and great. <laughs> I don't know. There's no way. There's no way for me. It's a layup. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a numbers game, gentlemen. So the answer is just a number. It's the okay. numbered heaven where the Camdens live on the WB drama. 
Seventh. Oh, you're talking about seventh heaven. <laughs> seventh heaven. Good job, gentlemen. There it is. Yeah, that, right there. that was a layup. You're right. Yeah. That was a layup. Never mind. I told you because our, our knowledge is just so vast and yes. expanseful yeah. and great. The grandeur. I, th- of our- I think we're going to have to get some harder trivia. Um, anyway, uh, Max, uh, we we roll into the credits here. Uh, Max, just remind our listeners uh, who you are, where you're from, what they could watch, what they could listen to yeah apparently i rant a lot so you can check me out on twitter at max 73 <laughs> you can check out our podcast uh the infinity bros podcast we're on every podcast channel and all social media so just google that from minnesota and uh just uh moving out of my house right now but uh thanks thankful to have you to come back on with you guys we're just uh thrilled to have you guys part of our extended universe and uh, to watch you guys grow and your show has been great and fun to listen to and uh we're we're uh we're oh, thank about you. you guys and and hopefully looking forward to down the road getting you guys back on with us would love to do that uh jelly uh and i are we're at the 90s first on twitter as well as instagram and facebook as well as our patreon if you'd like to support us monetarily but everything is free of charge as usual there is a friends reunion review uh written by myself on our patreon right now as well as uh i'm gonna be working this week i had to delay it just because of busyness uh but maybe working this week on my review of mighty ducks game changers so Spoiler alert, I thought it was fun. <laughs> also, uh, for those watching, that's a Ducks jersey right ooh. behind me. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, and as well as, uh, once again, leave us a review um, if you would if you'd be so kind. We love reviews. Uh, it helps us get into that algorithm stuff. Um, and then finally, we do have a video version of the podcast if you want to check out our uh, YouTube channel. A uh, link will be down below in the description. Well, guys, thanks once again, Max. Thanks for joining us. My name is Mike, that's Jelly, that's Max, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye, everyone. Party on, Wayne. Bye. Party on, Garth.